story. I was in the Rock Bottom restaurant on a busy Thursday at noon. There were no, no places to sit, no booths, no tables. And they sat me at the bar and I was waiting a few minutes. And a young man runs by me carrying a big load of dirty dishes on a heavy tray. And he stops and he looks at me and he says, sir, have you been helped? And I said, no, but I'm kind of in a rush. He said, well, I can help you, sir. What would you like? And, you know, I said, oh, the salad and maybe a roll. And he said, great. What would you like to drink? I said, well, I'll have a Diet Coke. It's my favorite. And he said, I'm sorry, sir. We only sell Pepsi products. And I said, ah, that's all right. I'll have water and lemon. He said, great. So he's gone. And a couple minutes later, he's back with the salad and the roll and the water and the lemon. And I, this is a very key part of the story, Charles. And as a speaker, the more you tell your stories, you kind of find nuggets that you didn't see when you first started telling the story. But I was, I was satisfied with the water and the lemon and the salad and the roll. He did not need to return. But I ask your clients right now, your members, how competitive is your marketplace today? How competitive, competitive is it? So do we need to go above and beyond? Do we need to be the company with the extra edge? Well, that's only going to happen when we have people, individuals going the extra mile. The extra edge comes from the extra mile people go. So anyway... I'm sitting there enjoying my lunch, and suddenly I feel the wind of enthusiasm blowing behind my back. The long arm of service stretches over my shoulder, places right next to my plate a 20 ounce bottle of Diet Coke, which is what I'd asked for. And I said, Wow, thanks. He says, You're welcome. He takes off. And I remember thinking, I'm going to hire him, and I don't care if he went to college. <laughs> That's another discussion. But anyway, I want to hire somebody who takes action and cares about the customer and has a, a heart of service and has energy and desire. And I just, I just sensed all this good stuff, accountability. So I called him over and I said, I thought you didn't sell Coke products. He says, we don't. I said, well, where did this come from? He says, grocery store around the corner. I said, really? Who paid for it? He said, I did, sir. Just a dollar out of my tip money. <laughs> so I hired him for sales. <laughs> and then I said, how did you have time to go get it? I'll never forget it. He straightens, he smiles, and he says, I didn't go get it, sir. I sent my manager. <laughs> How many of us would like to send our managers, Charles? And I said, I just stared at him like, wow. And then I said, why? Why did you do this? He looked kind of disappointed. He said, I'm sorry, sir. Didn't you want one? Didn't you want to Diet Coke? I said, yes, I did. You went the extra mile. And there's more to that story. But bottom line, he didn't, as he was running past where I was sitting and he stopped, he, he, he didn't say, hey, who's supposed to be covering this area? He didn't say, why don't I get paid more? He didn't say, when are we going to get additional training? And he didn't blame the customer. Why can't the customer learn to read our menu? He simply said, how can I serve you today, sir? That is a QBQ. And his name was Jacob. His last name was Miller. There's no relationship here. John Miller, Jacob Miller. But that's the kind of person I want on my team. But more importantly, Charles, that's the kind of person I want to be.